this is Mark here from Mark's Reviews and Tutorials, which also happens to be Mark from Nilambic Pool and Spa Service. And today I want to talk the to right you about chemical to use in your spa. Now, spas need um, a chlorine in them. I'm not going to talk too much about ozonators today. Having ozone in your spa definitely helps, stops it from going green, keeps it going, but you need additional things to go into it as well. Now, spa chemicals, sadly, there's a lot of people have got things hidden behind labels so that you don't know what's in it, you don't know what's really going on. Um, that sort of stuff I would tend to stay away with. Keep for your plain labeled stuff. Um, and then a lot of the times you'll actually be able to get it cheaper down at the hardware store um, than what you can uh, from your pool store. But one thing that's changed is that a really good sanitizer in spas used to be lithium hypochlorite. Um, I don't have any of it here because it's become very expensive and very hard to get. Uh, the simple reason is that Samsung and Apple have sort of bought up all the lithium mines and they're now making lithium batteries out of it and there's no longer a product which we can make lithium-based chlorine out of. Um, I'll go through this very quickly, but basically in a spa, because the water's hot, um, think about if, th if this was two people in a spa, in order for a germ to get from one to the other, it's just as the water's moving really, really quick and it's warm, it's like bang, bang, really super quick germ can transfer. So keeping a spa properly sanitized is really important. Those two people in a swimming pool, A, they'd be further apart and B, the water wouldn't be particularly rushing from one to the other and moving around like it does in a spa. So your water sanitation in a spa is really, really important. Now, what I recommend actually is that you put spa brom or bromine into a spa and have it floating around in a dispenser you don't have to have it in there when you're in the spa but for all the other times it's really important so many good reasons for using bromine when the spa water is hot when the temperature is really high um, the bromine actually dissolves quicker which is when you need more of it if you turn your heater off and the bromine the, the water temperature goes down the bromine will dissolve slower and that's when you need less chemical. So it's got that automatic variation as to whether your spa is heated or not. Um, and that's a real brilliant thing. Now also, this one here sitting right beside, it's called ShockRite Plus here. But what actually matters is the um, chemical that's actually there. And it's a potassium monoposulfate. Now you can get that in all sorts of different labels and brands, but it is brilliant as a shock dosing product because when you're using spa brom in your spa, uh, the bromine goes in in a free active form. And then when it hits the algae, kills the germ, does whatever it does, it goes to an inactive form of bromine and normally can't be used again. But the potassium monoposulfate, sulfate, the non-chlorine oxidizer, whatever name they've come up with for it, um, when you chuck that into your spa, it reactivates that inactive bromine back to active bromine again and it does the same thing for chlorine not just bromine so if you've got inactive stuff in there it brings it back to active it also does the non chlorine shock dose part as well but you get your bromine back you get a second dose out of it so you give that a dose not only does it do its whack um, shock dose thing it also reactivates the bromine so you get a bromine level back in your spa so for me that's the way to go um, using bromine tablets float them Hot or cold, keep the same amount of tablets in there. Um, check your chlorine levels, particularly when you start this system. The chlorine level and bromine level, most test kits will indicate both of them for you. Just make sure you're getting a color change on your DPD test. Um, and shock dosing. Every time you use the spa, um, sorry to be a bit gross about this, but you're perspiring in that spa. Um, and also, it's such a small concentration. Again, going back to the swimming pool illustration, the spa is a really small concentration of water with a whole lot of people in it. Swimming pool, much, much more water, less people. So every time you use your spa, you need to give it a dose of the um, non-chlorine, the potassium monoposulfate. Give it a dose to give it a shock and run it for a good half hour when you get out because all of the stuff that's been caught in the filter needs to have a bit of a filter with the shock dose in it to clean it up then your spa will be fine. But if you have four to six people in your spa and then get out straight away, turn it off straight away, everything that's being caught in your filters just left there to go festy in the cartridge um, until you turn it on next time around. So you definitely need to give a shock dose every time that you get out of your spa. 
So there you go. That's what I recommend is the best. There's a whole lot of other liquids and bits and pieces, but some of them can just cost the earth. Um, but for absolutely making sure that your spa is safe, having a sanitizer level present, um, I reckon these two are absolutely brilliant and a great way to go. And just to mention, I'll put a link um, in the description for um, where to buy this stuff. Um, so you've got one source at least. I've got an Amazon link in America I can put up and often they'll post it to all sorts of different places as well. But um, have a look and you get to see. I'll, I'll link to stuff. It won't be the same label, but I'll link to stuff um, that's the same product. Bromine tablets and potassium monoposulfate or this non-chlorine shocking product.